Let's really pray. We have heard the word. Holiness is not a word that comes from the world, but from the kingdom. For sanctified power will come today. The fullness of his blessing. Let it come upon us as we pray and as we abide in his presence. Talk to the Lord. Let the fullness of the blessing, let the completeness of the experience. Like Jacob, you are saying, I will not go, I will not let you go until you bless me. You receive the salvation, but then you wait because there's more to receive from the Lord. The Adamic nature needs to be removed. The body of sin needs to collapse completely. The love of God needs to expand and, ex and extend. And your faith needs to grow until when the power comes from above in Pentecostal measure so that our lives will be completely turned around. We're in the presence of the Lord today. There's cleansing power in the blood of Christ, our high priest. When we look up to him, he will not disappoint. He has never disappointed. His blood is still as efficacious, is still as fresh, is still as powerful. The blood that cannot lose its power. And that is the blood of Christ. And as the servant of the Lord, our Father and the Lord preached to us this morning, the prophet is not going to follow those details, go and bring this uh, turtle dove, go and bring this, go to the running water, speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. We have moved beyond the era of the powerless priests who have no power to cleanse. No power to cleanse no man. We're not looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised all the shame, made everything just perfect, is the king of kings, is the high priest, and it's also the Messiah, combining three key offices that you cannot find anywhere in the Old Testament. We're not just coming to church. The cleansing is not going to come from just church. Yes, attending church is good. It is going to come from the Lord. And if you are outside the camp, outside the congregation of the righteous, because the spiritual leprosy has excluded you, and you have been put in isolation somewhere, and you have no ability to cleanse yourself, but you know there's only one fountain, there's only one savior, there's only one sacrifice, there's only one high priest, there's only one mediator, between God and man, and you come to him today and you say, rock of ages, clear for me, let me hide myself in thee. It's not the labor of my hands. It's not the work of my hands. The work of a leper cannot be appreciated. The work of a leper cannot prosper. The works of the hands of a spiritual leprous person cannot be acceptable in the sight of God. And that's why when we come to the, the presence of God, we look up with the eyes of faith. We look at that Calvary, we look at the sacrifice that was made, we look at the completeness of that sacrifice, we look at the fullness of, of that sacrifice. And we say we are looking up to, up to you we repent of all our sins and we move beyond remorse because of the consequence of the sin. 
But then we are serious, we are genuine, with tears coming out of our eyes. And we say, Lord, we want that drop of blood upon our hearts again to bring about the sanctifying power. And we must wait for that experience before we can escape from bitterness like that little maid. It's not going to think this is what they did to me. They took me away from my father, my dad, and my mom. They took me away from our land. They must have destroyed our house right now. I will not give them any information. Of course, when the salvation comes, forgiveness follows. Forgiveness for those who have offended you. Like our Lord and Master said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We cannot move, we cannot make progress until we are forgiving those who have offended us. We put it away from our minds. That's how our words can be believable. That's how our, the gospel can be true in our lives. And the words we speak will be unassailable because we have a, a foundation, our feet resting upon the truth of the word of God. A vision then will be compelling. And a voice will be convincing. And as we are preaching that gospel, the same way we were saved, giving it wholly without changing anything. We will not change the word of God. Like Naaman, go and see the prophet, is going to see a king. We must go to the direction the Holy Spirit is leading us. And pride will take us nowhere. In fact, if that pride is still in the heart, it's a confirmation that we are not yet saved. If there's anger, bitterness, hatred, animosity, malice, and we still carry the gospel, the Lord did not ask us to preach the gospel of malice. It is the gospel of the Messiah. And as we are taking that gospel, we are doing the right thing, we are saying the right thing, we are going to the right direction. And if we discover that there's still something there, it's as if you are watching the worst version of yourself. You, the standard you set for yourself, you are disappointing yourself. And then you come, you say, pride is there. We cannot move with this pride. We cannot get to heaven with that. We cannot be in the kingdom. We can only be in isolation. And to come out of that isolation, like Neymar, we must come down from the horse and get into the, into the river. Because the, the fountain is still open. It's not too late yet. We carry the gospel convincingly. We carry the gospel conscientiously. We carry the gospel with a lot of responsibility. And we do it the way Christ did it. We have seen the example also in our Father and the Lord. The way he's doing it, the way God is helping him, the way God is expanding this gospel through him, like father, like son, like father, like daughter, the same way we shall do. when we have the privilege of ministry to God's people, we preach the whole gospel. We're not going to teach people about water, bring water to church, bring this. It is not the river Jordan that's going to save. It's not by water. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. That's how we have the promised performance. There'll be power behind that word that we are speaking. And when we get to River Jordan, just like Neymar, he was given the word several for perfection. Not three times, not four times. 
we go on until everything is fulfilled according to scriptures. And no matter what is going on, no matter the body in our heart, there's going to be instantaneous cleansing, immediate cleansing. And the expectation is that nobody will live here today the same way he or she came. That all sins must be dropped. Everything that has been making the journey so burdensome, everything will drop it at the foot of Christ. Instantaneous. Jesus, Jesus just says something. I will be thou clean, and, we, and the leper is cleansed. Because as you look up, you look up in faith. And you are believing the one that said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You are believing the one that says, Look up to him, and be ye saved, all ye ends of the earth. You are believing the one that says, By faith, repentance towards God, and faith towards, towards our, our Lord Jesus Christ. That the one who said that he will do it, the one who said it is finished, the one who said I am the way, the truth, and the life, the one who said with me nothing shall be impossible. And that gives you a lot of assurance that as he has said, so he will do. And as we leave here this morning, we have it in our hearts that the Lord has done it. We are living with that assurance. We are living with that belief that God has done it. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God who are no longer under the limitation of the Old Testament, I said in Jesus' name we pray. The people that have received the power, that received the, the confirmation, to the prayers that I've been praying. I said, in Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. Our Father, we thank you so much. Today, you have highlighted so clearly that holiness is not a, a public word that the unbelievers are speaking over there. But holiness is the word that belongs to the kingdom, the kingdom of people who are now submissive to the master the kingdom of people who can now be controlled by the rules and regulations of heaven, the kingdom of people that have been completely transformed, purified, purged from everything, worldliness, pride, hatred, animosity, malice, and everything, the kingdom of those who are purged from the sins of the, of the flesh. Oh God, as we look up to you as a church today, we look up with the eyes of faith. And we know you will not disappoint us. If you didn't disappoint, if there was no discrimination, that Neymar, a Syrian, can come in and get that kind of miracle, we will get a miracle today. If the power of the goats, of, of the blood of the bulls and goats, cleansing to the covering of their sins in the Old Testament, under this New Testament, the sins will not just be covered, it will be cleansed completely. And then we are going to move forward and, and, and get everything, the whole, the whole blessing, the full benefit that we get from the altar of God. Nobody will miss it today in Jesus' name. And if we have been looking up to God and waiting on him and praying and desiring and expecting that sanctific sanctifying power, O oh God of heaven, let that sanctification come upon us today in Jesus' name. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. He says that, that, that by the time we, we, we follow him to the point of sanctification, the walls of Jericho, the walls of sin will fall down. And then we are now moved to Jordan. And then out of our belly shall flow the rivers of living waters. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost will come down. And just like as our Father and the Lord is doing it here, we shall do it over there. He speaks to somebody who is sick, the person rises up. As a prophet, he's not going to, he's not going to re recommend all those Old Testament, the dead works of the Old Testament, the dead ceremonies of the Old Testament. Now we are standing with our two feet upon the confirmed word of God. And when we say it is finished, it is finished. 
When we say you are cleansed, you are cleansed. When we say you are delivered, you are delivered. Let it be in the name of Jesus Christ. We know that our Father in the Lord, his, his singular desire is that the words that he has spoken and that the word that God has given to him, to this church, and that we are following it. Father, help us to keep following it. That's how his joy is going to be full. When he shall hear about our affairs, both in Nigeria and in other states and other countries and other continents, that this same word that has come to them today, that this same word has been coming for about 50 years now, that we are ready to obey it, that is how his joy shall be full. And Father, we pray that his joy shall be full in Jesus' name. His labor over us shall not be in vain. His investment over all these years, his sacrifice and his prayer, it shall not be in vain in Jesus' name. But the result, the ground that I've taken in all this water shall produce fruits. We will be fruitful. We will be strong. We will be faithful. We will be holy. We will be sincere. We will be strong in the name of Jesus Christ. And as we are living here today, it is done. It is confirmed. Thank you, Father. We ask for more strength upon him. So that the next time you come, physically, spiritually, every aspect of his life shall be completely renewed. And then when we go to Bumosho, and the word of God is coming from there, it will come with a greater power. It will produce greater converts. It will produce greater signs and wonders. And that's how the GCK will be going and going and going with exponential increase. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe you have answered all these prayers. In Jesus' name we pray.